Hello everyone, I'm here again with my new video lesson in mathematics. This time I will be discussing sine law. How to determine the length of the sides and measure the angles of an oblique triangle. This is your teacher, I'm Mr. Mark Anthony B. Laroya. So let us first talk about oblique triangle. What is an oblique triangle? An oblique triangle is a triangle that has no equal side and no right angle, meaning each side has different length compared to other sides and no angle will be equal to 90 degrees. So let's say we have this oblique triangle, triangle ABC, so no angle will be equal to 90 degrees. And we have the sides A, B, and C, wherein each side has a different length. So let us now talk about the sine law. So we can identify the length and the measure of the angle of an oblique triangle using sine law. So sine law is actually derived by constructing two right triangles out of an oblique triangle. So let's say we have this oblique triangle ABC and then we construct this line. Through this line, we form two right triangles. This right triangle on the left and another right triangle on the right. So let's say this constructed line will be our side Y. So, side Y will be one of the sides of our right triangles. So, side Y will be an opposite side of angle A. And at the same time, side Y will also be the opposite side of our angle C. Now, let us first discuss the right triangle on the left side. Since this is sine law, that means we're going to use the sine function. So it involves opposite side and the hypotenuse. So we can consider angle A. So sine A will be equal to opposite side, which is Y, over the hypotenuse, which is the side C. So this is sine A equals Y over C. Simplifying y, it will become now y is equal to c times the sine of angle A. Now, let us now proceed with the right triangle on the right side. Using angle C, sine angle C will be equal to y over A. It's because the opposite side of angle C is y. And this time, the hypotenuse is the side A. So again, simplifying Y, Y will be equal now to A sine C. So we have now two equations for Y. Y equals C sine A and Y equals A sine C. So we can say that side C sine angle A is equal to side A sine angle C. So take note, if we divide both sides by the product of sine A and sine C, again, if we divide both sides by the product of sine A and sine C, we, will, we can simplify this equation into side C over sine of angle C is equal to side A over sine of angle A. So this will also be uh, this will also do for finding the ratio of side B and angle B. So the sine law will be now equal to the equation or formula to A over sine A equals B over sine B equals C over sine C. So take note that these small letters are sides and this capital letters are or uppercase letters are the angles. 
So let us now apply the formula for sine law. Let's say we have this triangle A, B, C, where A is equal to, or angle A is equal to 55 degrees, and angle C is equal to 60 degrees. Among the three sides, only side A has a value of 5 units. So we are asked now to determine the value of our angle B, the length of side B, and the length of side C. In this case, to solve for B, we cannot use, we cannot use yet the sine law. It's because B or angle B and side B are both unknown. In using sine law, at least one of these two should be should have a value. So how do we get angle B? Remember that the sum of the angles of a triangle is equal to 180 degrees. So first, we must get the sum of angles A and C, and then we subtract it from 180 degrees. So we have now 55 degrees plus 60 degrees is equal to 115 degrees. And so that means our angle B now will be equal to 180 degrees minus 115 degrees, that would be 65 degrees. So take note that our angle B is 65 degrees. Now, we can get first the value of side C. Since our A has the value for angle A and side A, angle C is also given, so we can use sine law to find the length of side C. So we can use side A over sine of angle A equals side C over sine of angle C. Let us first substitute the values of side A, angle A, and angle C. So this becomes 5 over sine 55 degrees equals side C over sine 60 degrees. Simplifying C, we will have now 5 times sine 60 degrees over sine 55 degrees. And through this, using your calculator, we will arrive at the answer 5.29. So that means this is the length of our side C, 5.29 units. So the length of C is greater or longer than A. It's because when it comes to angle, C is also greater than angle A. Now, to solve for our side B, since we already determined the value of our angle B, which is equal to 65 degrees, we can now use sine law. This time, we use side B over sine of angle B equals side C over sine of angle C. So let us first substitute the values of angle B, side C, and angle C. So we will have B over sine 65 degrees is equal to 5.29 over sine 60 degrees. And this will be the formula of our side B by cross multiplying the sine 65 degrees to 5.29. So you get their product over sine 60 degrees. The value now of our side B will be equal to 5.29. 53 units. So if you notice, side B has the longest value among the three sides. It's because it is also angle B that has the greatest value, which is 65 degrees. Another application of sine law in a word problem. An airplane on mid-air is on its way going to side B from city A. The angle of elevation form from city A to the plane is 25 degrees. And the angle of depression of the plane to city B is 40 degrees. If the diagonal distance of the plane to city B is 5 miles, how far is city B from city A? So, 
First, let us analyze the given. So 25 degrees here is the angle of elevation from CTA with respect to the airplane. This angle of depression of the airplane with respect to CTB is also or will also be the angle of elevation of CTB with respect to the airplane. It's because their horizontal lines are paralleled and it is just intersected by this diagonal distance between airplane and CTB. So therefore, you have now 25 degrees plus 40 degrees, you have 65 degrees. So the remaining angle now would be equal to 115 degrees. That is our angle formed by the airplane with respect to two cities, city A and city B. So we completed now our angles. All we have to do is to use the sine law to solve for the distance between city A and city B. So x or the distance between city A and city B over sine 115 degrees is equal to we can use 5 miles over sine 25 degrees. So simplifying x, we will have 5 times sine of 115 degrees over sine 25 degrees. And we will have now the distance between the two cities equal to 10.72 miles. So this is one way of how we can use sign law or how we can apply sign law in a word problem in real life situation so thank you very much for watching and i hope you learned something new about sign law so kindly share and like this video and you may also subscribe to this channel and thank you very much see you again next time god bless